Welcome to Psychos and Sa- uh, Sociopaths are Angry Fable. Now we're going to go uh, talk about, and Johnny brought this one up, uh, Jane Topin. Yes, and, and, and credit, shout out goes to my fiance, Mindy, because she was the one that brought it to my attention as we're walking past a, hus- a hospital uh, during our trip last week. So if we're going to say this, we've got to say it properly. We're, we're going to do talk a Boston about Boston accent through the whole thing? Oh, no, not the whole thing, because one, that's hot on the throat. Two, that's just obnoxious, and people well, will tune us out. Well, like, if, it, lose, if it's obnoxious, just, just take a couple of kids in your mouth, probably about a million. It should fix it out right up. <laughs> I, almost, I, almost, I almost broke my, uh, uh, my laptop on that one just by your face. Uh, uh. if if you're watching on our video uh, but if you're listening and you hear like a long pause johnny is looking at me like he's i had to pick my jaw up off the floor and my brain kind of just went into neutral because i i refused to process the dribble (laughs) that poured forth from the ungated sewer attached to mr dickerman's head that hey that was that was, that's that was under his nose connected to that lump three feet above his ass that was that was my pickup line at one point in time it's like hey you want to be a daycare today i don't know why i don't pick up women i just don't honestly yeah. all right so jane topin t-o-p-p-a-n <laughs> Uh, She was a nurse who went on a killing spree that started in 1885 with patients and friends and had claimed up to 30 victims by its end at 1901. Um, Well, okay. There's a lot of different stuff that's going on here. Uh, I mean, I say stuff, but there's a lot of different articles that are out there. Um, They're saying that that she may have killed as many as 30 people with forensic uh, toxicology in its infancy. She got away with morphine murders for years before she knew... uh, because she knew more about overdose poisoning than most doctors and detectives. So, why well, she do? Uh, on the on the uh, kill list on this, she has twelve confirmed, thirty one confessed, and more than a hundred suspected. Yeah, so she was born Honora Kelly in 1854 to Irish immigrant parents in the South End of Boston, right? So her mother would died of tuberculosis and her father was a drunk with mental issues, abandoned Honora at a, uh, to a foundling uh, orphanage. So she was indentured at the age of six to a Lowell couple, and that's L-O-W-E-L-L. It's a suburb. It's kind of like to the, I think, if I'm not mistaken, to the north a little bit. Okay. All right. Um, Abner and Ann Topan, who gave her a new name. After she was jilted as a young woman, Topin repeatedly tried suicide. Failing at that, she began training as a nurse at Cambridge Hospital, where she approached her 30, as she approached her 30th birthday, a certified spinster in those days. Uh, the stout brunette was no Florence Nightingale. She was nudged out of two hospitals after a series of aged patients died under her care. She was suspected of neglect, not murder although she was rebuked for reckless uh, use of opiates on patients. So Open went freelance in the 1890s, visiting homes of wealthy patients to administer treatment regimens and prescribed by, or prescribed by doctors. Again, the health of many of, her under, uh, many under her care took sudden fatal turns. Um, doctors were clueless at the time, so they explained the deaths with one or, or, or another dismissive, uh, dismissive diagnoses like uh, old age, bad heart, uh, apoxy, uh, diabetes, uh, strangulated hernia, things of that nature, right? Mm-hmm. Anything but overdose. Uh, meanwhile, Topin used forged prescriptions to stockpile enough morphine to numb half the brains on Deacon Hill, which that is a rather large section of Boston, by the way. Um, she delivered it to her victims diluted in those doses of whiskey or for the uh, uh, teetotalers, Hyundai, the Hungarian curative sulfur water. So basically she would just dilute it in the whiskey or water. Um, her roster of victims expanded from professional to personal and any petty, petty quarrel was liable to send open scrambling for her morphine kit. 
In addition to patience, she killed her elderly Lowell Mass landlords, Israel and Lovely Dunham. She killed her best friend, Sarah Connors, at, uh, at the age of 48. Uh, she did in her uh, she she did in her despised foster sister Elizabeth Brigham, and that woman's sister-in-law Edna Bannister, and a housekeeper Florence Coggins. And by the summer of 1901, Topin finally went too far. Um, she had rented a cottage for the season on Buzzards Bay from uh, Alden Davis, who got rich building a railroad linking Boston to Cape Cod. And when Davis prodded. Uh, Topin about her overdue rent, she decided to kill the entire family one by one. <laughs> Jesus. Alden Davis, his wife, Mary, and their two daughters, Gen- uh, Genevieve Gordon and Mary Gibbs, were poisoned between July 4th and August 8th at their Cape Cod home in Catamount. At last, the inert authorities were spurred to investigate and found morphine in the exhumed body of Mary Gibbs. How did they figure out it was morphine back then? I, I guess somebody tipped her off. I guess maybe they finally got around to asking like the different pharmacies, the different hospitals, things like that, where the, these morphine supplies were being made available to medical professionals, i.e. nurses, and said, hey, we see her coming in all the time. So I'm willing to bet that enough of a paper trail finally decided to build up. Um, yeah, because back then, back then you could kill somebody and literally get away with it. There's some, there's, I mean, they're, uh, Oh, either they kill you the time from the turn of the century yeah yeah they would either like kill you or you'd only get like five years in prison or some shit like that especially if right. you're a woman you could get totally get away with it if you're a woman oh yeah so Tobin was charged with murder and placed on trial in barnstaple cape cod in june of 1902 or two bellowing yellow journalism was at its climax and nurse Tobin became a coast-to-coast sensation so she was basically kind of like one of the first headliners right like they made a big deal about it um psychiatrists added a layer of uh, psychosexual hysteria to the story when they reported that topin told them that she found orgasmic pleasure in murder a male dude 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 survived. even okay, even worse here here's an article off of uh holger's uh hoosier state chronicles published uh shortly after topin uh, arrested reported that she uh, would follow her victims as they die and attempt to see their inner workings of their soul through their eyes. Under questioning, Topham stated that she de- uh, uh, derivated a sexual thrill from patients uh, being near death, which is what she said. Dude, could you imagine that? Just you're, you're killing a person and you're you're... I say some so, horrible things, but I don't and, even want to say horrible things. Oh, and one. along those lines, a male victim who survived uh, her nursing said he awoke up from a morphine haze to find her straddling him. Oh, dear God. So William Randolph Hearst, New York Journal's depict, uh, uh, the, the, the Randolph Hearst uh, from the New York Journal. Yeah. Depicted Topin as a vile necrophile in a secondhand confession. The paper wheedled out uh, of James Murphy. Uh, so they, they wheedled that out. They say wheedle, W H E E L E D wheedled. That's a cool word. I'm going to start using that. Um, wheedled out of James Murphy, who was her attorney at the time. It sounded more like a creative work of new pa- newspaper writer, uh, rewrite is, um, describing her uncontrollable passion. Topin said she, no voice has had much melody in it as the one crying for life. No eyes as bright as those about to become fixed and glassy. No face so beautiful as the one pulseless and cold. You know what? I mean, and and not to glorify what she did, but that actually was kind of beautiful. In a dark kind of a way, that was actually kind of beautifully stated. Yeah, I guess so, but uh, okay, it's, 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 and, and it's, it's kind of mind, fucked beauty. Up, beauty is always going to be in the eye of the beholder, right? Yeah, so, you know, but just just the soliloquy. I don't even know if that's the proper way to apply that word, but I mean, it just it, it just the vernacular effortness or effort effortlessness that was applied to reading that, dude. It just floats. I mean, it to me. To me, that was a beautiful statement. I mean, I know it's dark, it's twisted, and it, it can't. Well, you also got to you also got to look at there. There's some women if you show up with dead flowers, 
they love it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, oh, wave, you're in the camera. Huh? Wave, Colin, I can see you back there. There we go. All right. So um, a journal wordsmith added, her recital of her crimes makes one blood, one's blood run cold. She has told of the death of her victims as if she were talking about a summer picnic at which she enjoyed herself. Of the fiendish subtlety she employed in ending human lives, the patience she maintained during the, the praxisms preceding disillusion, the exuberance and joy which came to her and she saw their eyelids press down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the water boy being played in the background. My boys have not seen it yet. And being is that I'm a good dad, I'm introducing them to that part of the Adam Sandler multiverse. Well, my daughter wants to watch Invincible when she gets here. So so you're going to expose it to Mark Wahlberg and, you know, his uh, attempt to make the Philadelphia Eagles, right? That, that, that Invincible? Oh, no. I know which Invincible you're talking about. God, yes. what kind of? That's totally. No. I thought you were I want you. I want you to take your hand. And I want you to put it as arm length as you possibly can. Then draw it hit back as fast too hard as possible. And I re-trigger another concussion. I'm going to come after you, and I'm 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 going to hurt you in a ma major way. <laughs> okay. Um, her trial ended with a, a verdict of not guilty due to inherited insanity. She was locked away at the Massachusetts Mental Hospital in Taunton, where she survived for decades. She died at the age of 84 in 1938. Topin's confession claimed 31 murders, though the body count is gauzy, as with most serial killers. I'm Yet she is on that really one. included among others in the pantheons of villains, Bundy, Gacy, Dahmer, Warnos, etc., perhaps because of the insanity verdict. But like the pitless psychopath she was, Topin declared she felt no remorse whatsoever. Her one regret that she got caught by killing too many Davises too quickly. That, Nurse Token declared, was the greatest mistake of my life. Yeah, she's just a crazy. She felt no remorse in it. And willing, I'm willing to put money on it that because she said that was her greatest mistake, if she could go back and do it all over again, that... Uh, she probably would have just paid the rent and not killed the landlords and just gone on about her way. We, we, we could probably be talking about one of the more prolific serial murderers in American history. Yeah, but also, <clears throat> if you look at it, and, and you already did say this, she was technically like Ted Bundy. I mean, if you look at uh, uh, all the stuff that he did and how he did it and what he got off on it, I mean, she she wasn't really more horrific to the point to where she was like biting off uh, nipples and stuff like that or doing anything like that but if you look at the the psychology of it and, and pair the two they're yeah. almost like well i mean there's even, a lot of differences on the murders but they are yeah. a lot alike. She even, she even proposed that a trip to the altar would have spared her a life from many, uh, of infamy as the one of as one of america's most prolific female serial killer uh, murders quote if i had been a married woman she once mused i probably would have not killed all of these people end quote but she was never even like i don't even think that that was a blip on her radar because like the, you know like like i said earlier i mean it's at the age of 30 unmarried that's that's spinster status back at the turn of the century yeah but if you also look at it this way, is for what I've noticed, a lot of the female serial killers don't actually start killing when uh, they have to go through like menopause. I think, <clears throat> I think it, it's, yeah, it's just my concern. She started, she started ex uh, exhibiting those, those, those traits before 30. Okay. Yeah. So got me on that I one. think a lot of it. I think a lot of it because you remember, you know, her dad, her mom died of yeah. uh, tuberculosis and her dad had mental issues. So, yeah. OK, so I could see the inherited insanity. But with the with the mental issues, I mean, her dad dumped her off at, at a damn at an orphanage. Yeah. Well, you also got to look, look the thing about back then, though, 
is it's like what I said uh, I said earlier back the, in that time frame women yeah. could get away with murder and they just have to I was like oh they're not right it's, it's because back then women were considered a experience in the vapors <laughs> yeah <laughs> But back That's then, awesome. women women were. I mean, even today, in the small and minute things, depending on what judge you get, uh, women were considered, or and, and somewhat considered now, uh, something that needed to protect. Even if they did something horrible and everything, unless you get like, I mean, look at what happened with Casey Anthony. Yeah, I mean, that woman should have freaking fried. Oh, she should like have. Baloney. But like I said, you know, the prosecution, the prosecution shit the bet on that case. Just like, and now, and, and to kind of bring something more current event here, Kyle Rittenhouse, the dude's not guilty to begin with, at least as far as my eye is concerned and the majority of Americans that are, con you know, concerned, he, he's not guilty, right? He, it was all self-defense, all three counts, right? I mean, the prosecution is absolutely shitting the bed right now i mean they are well it's not even the like prosecution two, three it's days in really a row now the, they've gotten really yelled at by the judge for violating certain constitutional rights i.e like the right to remain silent oh yeah yeah admitting or uh, uh, uh submitting a video that was already made uh, deemed inadmissible oh yeah yeah they're they're trying they're trying their damnedest and What's really sad, and this is getting way, way off topic, but we were, I was wanting to talk about this tomorrow when we do What the Hell or Sunday. I think we're going to do Sunday. Yeah, we can do what the hell. Uh, But on, on, on the facts of all the stuff that's on video and everything like that, now to put my two cents and how I view on this, mm -hmm. he shouldn't have fucking been there in the fucking first place. Well, okay, we could we could play devil's advocate and be like he shouldn't have been there to begin with. Yeah, we can say that all day long, but I mean it was his right to be there and it was his right to openly carry. Now I love I love the argument that the prosecutor tried to make today. He said, What normal person carries an AR-15 in body armor in the trunk of their car? Uh my kid. Depending on what depending on what kind of uh area that you work in or live in i mean, I mean if i was in haiti if i was in haiti i would i would be i would be in like a full kit right but they keep trying to say things like you know this isn't normal behavior i mean they keep trying to marginalize every anything and everything they can they're trying to go for whatever angle the fact of the matter is is that when their star to, their star witness on this final count said that he was not fired upon until he was standing over Kyle Rittenhouse pointing a pistol that a he should have never had because he is a convicted felon. He pointed that pistol down at him and then he got shot. Yeah, you know, and that prosecutor sitting over there going, "Oh yeah, the famous that was so palm. glorious, dude. It was so that was... glorious." But... And what what would what's really sad is is the fact that even one of the witnesses said the prosecutors told them to lie on stand so yeah so it's any if any of that transcript if any of that was transcribed and it gets out oh those guys are fired oh uh, yeah that, that that prosecuting team could go ahead and just hang it up you know i mean much like our own local district attorney announced today plans for re-election. And I'm going to go on record as saying this. My, my opinions, my thoughts and opinions do not reflect those of Angry Me Productions. They might, but I'm just, you know, that legal disclaimer. I, I mean, don't care if it is a yellow dog Democrat. I don't care if it's the fucking dog catcher. If anybody runs against John Gillespie here in Wichita County for district attorney, I'm voting for that person. I, yeah, you, 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 you'd write in Mickey Mouse. I would. Roger fucking Rabbit. But, uh, you know, oh, it's really sad. Buddy, but that guy, Eddie. <laughs> you know, it's sad, though, for for 
for someone that you know i, I don't want to have this as a political standby or anything like that but we oh. already had like two potential governors come on the show right one one dropped out one still running yeah, and no, everything. If, if, if mr gillespie wants to come on the show by election law rules we have to let him on because we have to give him some airtime only if we've had another candidate though so we just want to yeah. interview anybody for for district attorney right? yeah yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Luckily, no one to pay us in You totally didn't even pick up on that whole Roger Rabbit impression I just did. <laughs> no, I did. I thought it was wonderful. Stop being a little bitch. I was like, come on. You want me? You Do you, do you want me to go to the store, buy you a bag of cookies? You better and, watch out because if you don't back off, I'm telling you right now. Oh, boy. I, I've got bullets back in the trunk that are bigger than your head. <laughs> so chocolate chip or white chocolate macadamia how about, or, how about, this? How about this? Um, you want you want ah, to ah, shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> anyways since we're uh, <laughs> since, since we're pile full of time and and uh i'm 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 no i'm i'm a good enough distance you can't kill me <laughs> if it helps you sleep at night <laughs> yeah anyways uh <laughs> thank you angry faithful for watching us and keeping up with us even at the last part but uh, this is angry another <laughs> that's is that our, our new sign that, that's going to be our official salute now no wait because it's kind of like a, a cross between the wakandan salute let's well, just it's an angry wakandan salute salute yeah we could do that and just flip the birds and everything. I mean, uh, as long as we do it at like the they end. Did in colonial America. Fi. <laughs> <laughs> I never. Under, I'm like, really? Fi? What is this? We just. All right, angry faithful. If you're watching, this is how it's going to go. We're going to yell out, "Angry faithful, present arms." <laughs> 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 just double barrel the screen. Yeah. Um. You know, that should be our next t-shirt. Angry Faithful and just two better. Yeah, okay. Oh, no, that is our insider shirt. Yeah, we could do the insider. So, no, that is how we will do the Patreon. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Or, 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 or. So that way we don't get complacent into this whole, okay, well, I'm just going to kind of bide my time, blah, blah, blah. And it actually forces us to use things like I don't know, our creative process. Um, through our YouTube channel or through our Facebook page, we'll figure out a way to put up a link or whatever um, to our site. And we, you can work on this for the website. Put up a uh, angry faithful section that requires a paywall. So we can do like $30 a year. And it gets- Well, a, we, have, we have Patreon. So if we just do the- uh, okay, like a, do Patreon, just do the link to the Patreon. And then what we can do is we can do like an exclusive Angry Faithful episode every week that's exclusive to the Patreon channel. Yeah, I was thinking about that, but we have so many, we don't have that many people and everything because Drinking Bros do it with Jack Manorville on Friday at six okay, o'clock. Well, but yeah, we can do something like that. It's, hey, fuckheads, here's, the, here's the deal. You, you have a mission and you don't have a choice as to whether or not to accept it. So let's get our membership up to a hundred followers on our YouTube channel. Cause as soon as that happens, we will watch the official Patreon channel for the angry faithful. Yeah. Oh, also, I uh, found out something. I think we can go live now on YouTube. Really? Yeah. I wanted to try it out this weekend. Okay. So Sunday's episode. All right, great. Um, let's do it after six. Yeah. Because that way I can drop the boys off and, you know, I, we can get everything all stopped, you know, knocked out of the way and we can be raw. We can be <laughs> unfiltered, unedited. Well, we have to wait five minutes. We could just like. Yeah. yeah, I get it. I get that. But we can do a live episode. So, yeah. Yeah, there's that. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll try to do the live episode on, uh, on uh, YouTube. Good thing about live uh, live episodes on YouTube is that they automatically upload themselves to the channel. Yeah, and I can what I can do after that is I can uh, <laughs> Once record post, the audio. I think it takes like thirty or forty minutes for them to actually post the, to the page. 
Yeah, the- and I can record the audio as long as it doesn't go past like an hour and a half. Ah, yeah, no, we'll we'll set a timer for ourselves. Yeah, that's the only scripting that we'll have. Yeah, I love how we I love how we do our business stuff uh, stuff while we're recording. It's just freaking awesome. It gives people uh, the idea of what to expect next. Right, exactly. So you know, if if you're a follower of our channel, we thank you. If not, go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right well right, you know what just real quick i i gave the the movie fat man another chance the other night uh the one with mel gibson in it where he played i Netflix. love that movie man it was a good movie we, well see the first time i watched it it was like the weekend that it came out on streaming and i was like i fell asleep oh and i was okay. like you know what it was on sale on voodoo so i i bought it it was like nine bucks and i i watched it yesterday as a matter of fact i'm like you know what i'm in the mood for a christmas movie but i want something with violence and I don't watch Die Hard until Christmas Eve. That is just my, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my tradition. And uh, Mindy is going to now be part of that tradition because I'm like, look, it's this has to happen. It's it's something that just it's a thing, right? So, yeah. But uh, yeah. So I watched Fat Man yesterday, and you know what? You're right. I mean, you didn't say anything to me about this movie, but I mean, I completely agree with you. I absolutely love that movie. You weren't in the group chat when I did mention it. No, I was not. And so like, like that scene right there at the end, whenever, you know, the kid's getting visited. Yeah. (laughs) And he's got that gaping scab over his eye. Right. And he's like, St. Nick's got his eye on you, kid. I'm like, that is some grizzly Clint Eastwood slash Mel Gibson had a love child angry shit right there. And that was beautiful. No, it was Mel Gibson. I mean, it was I know, straight up I Mel know, Gibson. I know it was Mel Gibson. I'm just saying that sounds like some angry crap that like Clint Eastwood would say. Like if Clint Eastwood were to play Santa Claus, he'd be like, I've got my eye on you, punk. <laughs> He would, he would, put, it would be a cross between Dirty Harry and Gunny, uh, Gunnery Sergeant Highway. Okay. You know, he would be like, uh, you can whip me. You can beat me. You could even kill me. Just don't bore me. <laughs> you know, like, Look, just because you left cookies and milk out for me doesn't mean that we're going to take long, hot showers together, comprende. <laughs> 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 Another good movie to watch. Anyways, thank you for watching Psychos and Sociopaths episode. I'm David Dickerman. I'm Johnny Skelton. And this is Psychos and Sociopaths. Thank you, Angry Faithful. Do, 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 do. Huh?